Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Applied Energistics tutorial series. And look who it is. Today we have Shiva Hello. with us, and he's here because we're going to be talking about P2P channels and tunnels, I mean. And he knows more about them than I do, and he helps set up all the stuff we're going to look at today. So he's here to answer any questions that we, or let you know anything that I forget or don't know. So, P2P tunnels. They are a very powerful tool in Applied Energistics, um, but they can be a little confusing to the layman. So hopefully at the end of this video, you will know how to use PDP tunnels in a variety of different ways. First things first, <laughs> give me a nice nod. First things first, let's take a look at how to craft a PDP tunnel. Uh, PDP tunnel, which looks just like this, as you can see here, looks similar to the other um, buses, but has its own little look. It is crafted with three Fluix Crystals. Now you don't have to use the pure ones. Uh, you can use the, the regular ones as well. Three Iron Ingots and an Engineering Processor. And that gives you one PDP tunnel. So they're not the most expensive things in the world, but they're also not cheap. And that will get you the PDP tunnel. But you can't just use the PDP tunnels by themselves. You need something else. That something else is a memory card. Because PDP tunnels are paired together. So you need the memory card in order to pair them. And the memory card is crafted using a calculation processor. Remember, that's the one that needs service cords. Two iron ingots, two gold ingots, and a redstone dust. It's basically crafted like it looks in the picture. It's kind of neat. So once you have your uh, memory card and, your, and uh, at least two P2P tunnels placed down, you can hold the memory card in your hand and then you can hold... What's the combination you have to hold? It's Shift on the first one and then... Yeah, yeah. Then I thought it was Shift Alt or something. Shift on the first one that you want to... Right. In the space of the master and the second one, just shift click on it. So I shift click on the first one and it says successfully saved settings and then I just right click on the other one and it says successfully loaded settings. Now these two P2P tunnels are connected. The connection only goes one way. The bottom one, the one that I shift right clicked on, is the input side, and the other one is the output side. Unfortunately, there's no GUI or HUD or, or any vi an indication on the actual buses that they're connected or what they're connected to. So, unfortunately, other than uh, other sorry, other than when when they turn on when they connect them, they flash in the back back. Right, it's black right now because there's no power on this little setup here. Um, you are going to probably have to remember which ones you've uh, connected together. But that's how you do it. You just use the memory card, shift right click on the first one, and right click on the second one. And then to clear the settings on the memory card, just shift right click without pointing it at anything. And it'll say setting cleared. Okay? So that's how you set up your P2P tunnels. Now there is also... Um, well, first we'll talk about this, yeah. So we've got a little bit of a setup here, a tiny one, with just an ME chest, which currently has... 64 dense cables in it, red. We've got ourselves a controller. On the right of it, we have a P2P tunnel placed up against the controller. And then we have another P2P tunnel connected to two pieces of cable with a terminal on it. Now the important thing to look at on this current little setup that we've got is that there's a quartz fiber cable here. If you look, this terminal is not connected to this controller except through the P2P tunnel. If I right click on the terminal, we can see that there is 64 dense cables accessible through the terminal. But if Shiva goes ahead and breaks this cable, there's now no more dense cable. We can't access the dense cable from the terminal. We can still access it if you move off the chest. I can. We can access it still through the chest, but not through the terminal until it gets replaced. You can put it back. And then we can go in here and there it is. Okay, so this is a very, very, very basic little look at what the tunnel is doing. It's taking the 32 channels being output by this side of the controller and it's outputting them through the uh, paired one. Of course, since we've got a standard uh, cable here, it's only outputting 
up to eight channels, but we'll take a look at that later. But basically, it's it's allowing this terminal to connect to the network. Now, there's a couple different. And uh, wait. Yes. And also, when you break this, it saves the connection set. Yeah, yeah. Once these two are paired, they'll remain paired as long as you don't break one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So now there's a couple different modes uh, to P2P tunnels. Right now, it's in ME mode. That's that's the default mode. Uh, once you craft this, it'll be in ME mode by default. That's the one that you use, like we did over here, to send to connect various uh, channels together. However, there's a variety of them, and if I if you if if I take some of these things, for instance, a cobblestone transport pipe from Buildcraft. If I shift right click, no, it's just right click. I keep forgetting. Okay. It's just standard right click. It'll change the background to to a dark gray one. Now it's in item mode, and it can actually send items between P to P. Uh, uh, tunnels. If I right click with this fluid pipe, it'll change to fluid mode, which will allow us to actually send fluids through uh, without storing them in the network. If I right click with the dust of redstone, I get a, a redstone tunnel. With a torch, I get a light tunnel. And if I right click it with any sort of um, ME cable, it'll go back to ME mode. Now, if you about RF. Ah, uh, yeah. Do you have one? Do it. Right click it. And there's RF mode. It, it looks similar to ME mode, but it's, it's like an, the iron block texture rather than this sort of bluish one. Now, does that, that that pretty much works for any pipe that can carry liquid and items? Uh, it, apparently, Bill Craft's broken, but apparently, yes, with inner items. Yeah, so, it, but basically, if you take a power cable or a, or an item thingy from almost from yeah. any mod and right-click it, it should work and switch the mode. But that's how you... S or with just... And also with buckets for fluid. Yes, fluid buckets as well. Yeah. So you just right click it with something that holds a fluid and, and it should switch to that blue mode. Um, so mm -hmm. that we're going to take a look at a setup using each one of those. Um, first one we're going to look at is inside this little dirt shack with blackout curtains. So let's, let me explain what we've got here. So out there we've got a little controller and we've got an ME network set up with some cable. Okay. Um, in here we have a P2P tunnel in light mode and a P2P tunnel in redstone mode. Now outside, there is a P2P tunnel that's facing upwards, but it's underneath a block of dirt. And we've got a piston with a P2P tunnel also in redstone mode. So what you're going to see is two things are going to happen. When I pull this lever, the redstone signal from the lever is going to go through the P2P tunnel, and it's going to output it to the piston. It's going to move that block of dirt. And then the light tunnel is actually going to let the daylight into this room. So it's really cool. So that's how the so so the redstone tunnel is pretty straightforward. You 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 input a redstone signal to the input and it'll output it to the output. So when I pull the lever, it activated the piston. And then the light tunnel will take the light source that it's exposed to and output it into the room. Pretty neat. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to Shiva earlier and basically what you could do is if you had a lot of applied energistics in your base, if you used P2P tunnels light in light mode you could essentially light your entire base with one block of glowstone. Or even just with the sun, if you wanted your lights to go out at night. Pretty neat. So that's how those two work. Mm -hmm. Now if we come over here, we've got some demonstrations set up for how these P2P tunnels work with channels. So what Shiva's done is he's set up these P2P tunnels on the red wires. And then these uh, P2P tunnels are the matches and they're outputting the channels uh, to these lines of import bus wires like we did in the last episode. So as you can see there's a full set of channels running to each one of these. So, so there's 32 channels running here but it's connected to a standard uh, smart cable not a dense cable. So I, he, we didn't have to run a dense cable down and all the way across to these four uh, lines of wires. We just used P2P tunnels. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. Now, for this little setup here, it would probably be cheaper to just use dense cable, right? Because we're using a lot of fluids thingies, and, and it's a diamond per P2P channel tunnel. But that's just, this is just a demonstration. Now, over here, you can see that we've also got a dense cable set up against a P2P tunnel, and we are indeed. Tra uh, transmitting all 32 channels. Very cool. So P2P tunnels allow you to send uh, channels over quite a long distance without having to run 
condensed cable all the way there. Yep. And it, it allows you to use your existing uh, ME Systems wires to add on to it. Very neat. Okay, now we're going to come over here. As long as you don't have anything else to say about channels. Sheaves? Sheaves? About the, uh, for this and also that. Oh. Are you having some audio issues? Shiva? Yeah, I'm sorry. These people were bothered. Okay, what were you trying to say? <laughs> yeah, basically these four rows are not each... Are basically running off one P2P, so yes. you can actually do multiple outputs. Yeah, P2P channels can have mul tunnels. I keep saying channels. P2P channels can have multiple outputs. Um, it's one input to as many outputs as you want. So remember what we said. Each P2P tunnel can carry 32 channels. So we've only got the one P2P tunnel outputting to all four of these. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Now we'll come over here and we'll take a look at this setup. Okay, on the orange wire. Now, it's important to remember that just like over here, where we have these quartz fibers here, we have a quartz fiber here. This orange cable is not plugged into the white cable. It's, it's using the P2P tunnel. Okay, so this P2P tunnel is giving us channels from our controller. On this network, we have some P2P tunnels in item mode. Now, if we look at this terminal, we can verify there are no items in the network that this orange cable is connected to. No items at all. And if we look here, we can see that this P2P tunnel, if you look at the Wayla tool tip in the bottom right, is currently in item mode, and it's got a hopper connected to it. Over here, we have a open crate from Botania, which simply drops whatever items get put into it. At the bottom, we have a hopper. Both of these have a P2P tunnel connected to it. The hopper at the bottom is an input, and one of these P2P tunnels on the top is an output. And it's the same for this hopper, also connected to the open crate. So what's going to happen is that if whatever items I throw into this hopper are going to get output from the uh, open crate, go into that hopper and do the same thing. And it's going to have an endless item waterfall. So if I throw in a piece of cobblestone, you can see that the cobblestone continuously falls. It's going into the hopper, the P2P tunnel is sending it back to the open crate, and it's falling again. And if we look at the terminal, at no point do any cobblestone block appear in the terminal. This cobblestone block is not being stored in the ME system. It's simply being shot out of the, uh, the P2P tunnel. Very neat. So you can use this to transport items that you don't want to store in your ME system. Because let's be honest, sometimes it can be a little difficult to store everything. But if there are some items that you want to uh, send through your ME network, but you don't actually want to store them, you can use P2P tunnels in item mode to do just that. Anything you want to say about item mode, Chiefs? Um... Or do, Parts and, and also there is a tick limit, so we can only do like so many blocks at a time. Yeah, yeah. There's there is a, there thing. is like a transport limit. Yeah, it's basically a tick limit. Yeah. So, so for all these for all these modes, there is a tick limit. Right. All right. So there's that. That's the item mode. So very cool, useful for sending items around if you don't want to store them. Now we're going to talk about two more: the RF mode and the fluid mode. Okay. So underneath my feet, we've got a big steel tank from rail, uh, Railcraft to store a whole bunch of water. And way over here, we have a pump from Buildcraft connected to a fluid tunnel. And we've also got... An RF. And it's also connected to an RF tunnel, which has the generators for it way over here. Okay? Now, you'll notice that the Stirling engine outputs are going... We're using Endura uh, IO energy conduit because we've actually weren't able to get it to work with the Buildcraft uh, Kinesis pipes. We've no, those would have been nicer. Yeah, but they didn't work. The engines overheated; they they wouldn't output their power, which was annoying. Um, but we've got the uh, RF cable connected to the PDP tunnel for RF, which is connected to the uh, Buildcraft pump, which is connected to the fluid one. Uh, P2P, which is connected over here to this tank. 
which is going to feed it into this tank. So if you turn it on, Sheaves, we've also got our redstone. Mm -hmm. So remember, we, we've got redstone over here. Now, it's important to note that in order to run the redstone cable on top of this channel, you have to use a facade. Yeah, but you can't place a lever right next to it. Yeah. If it's like in, in the dark. Yep. So now it's working, see? The Sterling engines are outputting their power, which is going into the PDP Tunnel RF, which is going to the pump, which is outputting water, which is going into the fluid PDP Tunnel, which is coming out here and going down here. And at no point in this entire system is any water being stored in the, a in the ME system. It's not being stored at all. It's being sent through the system, but it's not being stored. It's pretty sweet. And each PDP tunnel is only using one channel. So that's very cool. Now, if you've got a base that's this size, it's probably not worth it, you know, because they're kind of expensive. But, you know, if you want to send the fluids to you know, way over there, if you don't want to clog up your base with a bunch of water pipes and, and item pipes and ducts, and you've already got a lot of ME cable running around, these things are a great way to piggyback the transportation of those things onto your AE system. It also may also reduce lag. Yeah, it may. So, you can see we've got water just pouring into this uh, tank. It's just going to keep coming until we turn it off. I mean, it's... Also, is it... Yes, okay. yes. What were you saying? Also, is a note that this, this section over here is on, it's on its own P PDP for the channel. Yeah, it's on an ME... It's on a P2P tunnel. So if you look at this piece of white wire cable right here, it's only using one channel for this P2P tunnel. Yet this is using um, three channels because it's coming; those channels are coming from the controller. Another instance where you don't have to uh, run a dense cable because, you know, it's a lot cheaper just to run normal cable. And that's mm -hmm. what P2P tunnels let you do. Very, very cool. So as you can see, it works. So you can use P2P tunnels to transport all manner of things through your ME system. Fluids, items, RF, redstone signals, light. There's also a couple of others. If I go into um, the, the creative and I go to a Planet Logistics 2, remember we're using the Bevo Tech Pack. And the Bevo Pack currently has open computers and it's also, so there's actually an open computers tunnel. And it's also got the, um, the Pneumatic Craft mod. So we've actually also got a also pressure. for the power, it can also oh. also can also can transfer instead of RF, and it can do EU. Yeah, there's also an EU tunnel, but uh, right here, the EU PDP tunnel. Although it's important to note that in in the future versions of uh, of uh, that mod, it's, it's switching over to RF, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. In, in the 1.8 version, it's already yep. there. So essentially, when you add a Planet Logistics with other mods, just keep a lookout for which P2P tunnels might uh, turn on. It depends if it's got uh, compatibility with it. So that's P2P tunnels. I hope it's not been confusing, um, but essentially the P2P tunnels just allow you to send things through the AE system while only using a single channel. Very cool. So let us know in the comments if you've still got any questions or if you need anything explained in further detail, we'll, mm -hmm. we, we, we of course answer the comments. Um, stay tuned for future episodes. Uh, I think in the next episode, I will show. I will, uh, oh, one more yes. Thing. I was, I was. This is basically see this controller setup. Yeah, it's basically the, the smallest you can think of being the most channels. You can basically build a small tower or just have it placed somewhere. And get like. 256 channels with just four p right four, like eight p's. yeah because if you're just using you if you're just up. using p2p's then you can just you know use the whole thing shrink, shrink down your controller so. yeah but stay tuned for future episodes in the series in the next episode i'll go over uh like a fully automated inscriber setup um just to show you how you can uh, automate that um actually wait i have to talk about the auto crafting before i can do that so i'll talk about the auto crafting system next so i hope you've enjoyed i'm setting lh and I'm signing out.